You're listening to Creative Breakthrough, the podcast that provides you with the strategies to elevate your creative passion to the next level. I'm your host, creative hustler, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. And yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Welcome to the Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. I am so excited about today's conversation with Bevy Smith about her new book, Bevelations, Lessons from a Mother, Auntie, Bestie. But before I get into that, three quick announcements, because you know I always come with those announcements, but I promise these are quick. Announcement number one, I dropped an episode a couple weeks ago called Spotify Called Me, and I shared with you why Spotify called me, our collaboration, and how exciting it was to get a phone call from Spotify. And I can't thank you all enough for those of you who reached out with well wishes and congratulations because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you all. Spotify would not have called me if you all weren't tuning in week after week to listen to this podcast. So I can't thank you enough how grateful I am for your your viewerships, for your listens, for you sharing this podcast with friends and family and for leaving reviews. So I'm gonna do a shameless post plug right now. If you got a second, go to that share button, share this podcast with someone who you think will like it or leave a review, reviews help as well. Announcement number two. I have started a new podcast. I know some of you are like, Shereen, you don't have time for a new podcast. I know, I really don't, but I'm working on time management in 2021 and I'm going to make this work. The new podcast is called Radio Rejects Live. I started it with Phil Bird. Phil Bird is my podcast producer actually for this podcast and he used to be on ESPN radio. I used to be on morning talk show radio. We both are radio rejects now. We're not on the radio. So we started our own thing and it goes live every other Sunday on podcast on Facebook. We go live on Facebook. So just go to facebook.com forward slash radio rejects live and you can find us there. Definitely hit that subscribe button, join the group and tune in every other weekend. We try chicken wings every other week. We talk about our TV and movie recommendations. We talk about pop culture and entertainment. We talk about all the randomness that you need on a Sunday afternoon. So definitely tune in. And the last announcement. Next week, we will be joined by the one and only Ali Velshi from MSNBC. So if you are an Ali Velshi fan, you may have seen him on Al Jazeera, MSNBC, CNN, any of those awesome, amazing channels. He's been covering, he was covering the election, um, not to start a political war here, but Donald Trump hates him. So you probably heard Donald Trump talking about him at rallies and stuff. But Ali Velshi will be on this podcast in two weeks. So if you've got questions for Ali, let me know. Hit me up. Send them through on the Facebook group, Creative Breakthrough Community on Facebook. DM me on Instagram at Funny Brown Girl or email me at hi at funnybrowngirl.com. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. So before I before I jump in, just one caveat. You know how like when you have this really big thing happening in your life and you're, all your focus is on that one thing and you're just making sure everything is perfect and then right at the, right at the last minute something goes wrong? Well, that kind of happened to me. So Bevy, she was a fashion executive and I knew she was coming to this interview decked out. Like I knew she was going to be dressed up and have her makeup done and be all glammed out. So I spent my morning trying to glam myself up too. And if you know me, I'm more of a t-shirt and like hair up kind of girl, especially during COVID. I just couldn't care. And so I was all like prepared. I had my computer ready. I had all the questions ready, but I checked all the sound, the audio, everything was great. Five minutes before I sat down for, to talk to Bevy, my computer said, we're going to do a quick update. And I was like, wait, what? Stop, stop, stop. And literally I didn't, it it wouldn't stop. I couldn't stop the update. So I had to go and find another laptop to use for the interview. And if you're watching this visually on YouTube or anywhere else, you'll see even my camera sucks. So I apologize that the audio on my end is a little off, um, but Bevy sounds great. She looks great. So just pay attention to what Bevy's saying, because that's really what matters in this interview. Okay. So I was super excited to talk to Bevy. I met Bevy at American Black Film Festival a couple years ago and I was blown away by her. Just her presence, her confidence, her beauty. And then I had the chance to read her book that came out a couple weeks ago and I was mind blown because as a woman of color in my 30s, I just, I could see myself as Bevy Smith. I could see myself fighting with my demons and fighting with who I wanted to be. And we talk about that, about the whole idea of fighting, which you might've heard in the intro trailer. 
But this book, I it's not even just for women of color. It's not for people in their 30s. This book is for anybody who who feels stuck in their career. Do you wake up every morning and ask yourself, why do I have to go to work? Why am I going to this job? What is this fulfilling for me? What is my passion? And you're just not satisfied with where you are right now, this book is for you. If you do have a passion, if you are either on, on a route or a journey in that passion, or you have a passion and you're not sure how to get started on that journey, this book is for you. Are you a budding entrepreneur? This book is for you. Are you someone who wants to make a life change or a shift? This book is for use. Are you someone in 2021 who needs motivation, something to inspire you, something to get a fire set up under your ass to get moving this, this year? This book is for you. So I, and I, I don't, I don't, you, you, for those of you who are OG listeners on this podcast, you know, I don't come on here all the time encouraging you to read or, um, read a book because I know we as creatives have so much more going for us in, in terms of writing and, uh, journaling and watching, write, reading scripts and reading, writing poetry. And I'm, I'm making stuff up right now, but anyways, you know, I don't come out on here telling you guys to read because I, you know, I, and I've been honest with you, I don't read as much as I should, but this book was something else. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you reading it. I'm going to go ahead and introduce who Bevy Smith is and why she wrote this book. And then we're going to get right into this interview. Okay. Quintessential Harlem girl and lifelong New Yorker, Bevy Smith is the host of Series XM's Bevelations on Radio Andy. Once a widely successful luxury fashion publishing exec, Bevy shifted her professional goals over a decade ago to pursue a life in front of the camera. A pop culture aficionado and fashion expert, Bevy served as moderator of Bravo TV's Revolutionary Fashion Queens for three seasons and was the host of the nationally syndicated Page Six TV for two years. Bevy continues to be part of the Wendy Williams Show Style Squad. Smith's debut book, Bevelations, Lessons from a Mother Auntie Bestie, which details her transition from a fashion advertising executive into a media personality published through Andy Cohen Books, dropped last week. Bevy's goal with this book is to tell readers her story, the good and the gritty, the bad and the bougie, from being a shy, nerdy girl who gets bullied in Harlem to being the only one in corporate spaces her life pursuing a high-powered fashion advertising career to being 38 years old and believing that she could become a TV personality without selling her soul on reality TV. Bevy turned 54 last year and she hopes to inspire people to chart their own course, dare to dream, and to know that life definitely gets greater later. In her signature lively and infectious voice, Bevy provides her story as an example of how we too can manifest our biggest dreams. From reclaiming her bold childhood nature and realizing she'd become a Googleable star to envisioning where she's headed next, Bevy shows how each of us can live our best lives with honesty and joy. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Welcome to the guest chair, Bevy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Well, I'm going to have a quick fangirl moment with you, okay? Because I met you a couple years ago at American Black Film Festival at the HBO After Party. Okay. And when I met you, I, I just knew you as Bevy Smith, the celebrity, the, the beautiful celebrity from Bravo. And I was like, oh my God, I'm meeting Bevy Smith. And then I read your book and I was like, wow, you, you are an inspiration. I mean, your book was raw. It was genuine. Um, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties and everything you said, just literally, I was sitting there thinking, this is what I needed in my life right now. So I have to say, thank you so much for, for writing this book and then allowing me to even read it because I honestly, it changed my life. So oh, wow. You. Well, no, thank you so much. You know, the, um, the subtitle of the book is the title is Bevelations Lessons from a Mother, Auntie, Bestie. And the mother part comes from a lot of my adopted gay sons call me mother and it's an honor it's an honorary title and i and i love that i am mother of the house um auntie comes from young women like yourself you know women who are in their 20s and early 30s who connect with me and because i've had a very big um uh, well-lived life um still going on praise them but also because um a lot of the young women that have seen me on various TV shows, be it Bravo's Fashion Queens or whether it was Page Six TV, they all say that I remind them of their rich auntie or their cool ass auntie. And I'm like, I'll take that. Um, and so 
I take a lot of pride in that. And then of course the bestie part comes from women who are more of my age, contemporaries, women in their forties and fifties and up. Um, and that they, they tell me that I feel like someone that they know and someone that they're connecting with in a really, um, in a very real manner, excuse me. And that was the goal for the book. And that's the reason why I break the fourth wall a lot throughout the book, because I wanted it to feel very conversational. I wanted it to feel conspiratorial at times. Um, but I just wanted you to feel my, my, my warmth. I wanted you to feel my anger, my sadness, all of it. I wanted you to feel the wide range of um, my emotions. Well, you hit it out of the ballpark because I, as I was reading it, it was as if you were living my life, but a couple years after me, like you were ahead of me in life. And it just, it, it gave me a moment to pause and think, okay, this woman that has accomplished so much in her life still has so much more she wants to accomplish. And she went through all these trials and tribulations as a woman of color, and she's still here fighting the game. And for me, that was just super inspirational. So thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that you got that out of it. You know, and I, and I want to say too, you know, to yourself and to your, your listeners, you know, um, don't, don't think of it as a fight. You know what I mean? Just think of it as a journey mm -hmm. um, because really the, the fight part of it puts you on the defensive already. That is true. I like and, that. And we want to walk through life kind of like with an open heart and an open mind because mm -hmm. we never know, as you see from reading the book, we never know where the gift is going to come from. We never know where the, where someone's going to see us and then earmark us for something amazing and great. So if we go through life as a journey and just like, oh, look at that little twist and turn. Oh, I never thought about going over there in that little nook and cranny. Let me walk on over there and see what's going on over there. It really does help um, with the mindset. Because if you go in with a fight, you're like, all my life I had to fight. Like, you know, we're open <laughs> And it puts you in a totally different mindset. Yep. No, I, and I like that. That's another revelation. So tell us a little bit more about where you came up with the idea of focusing your book on revelations. Well, you know, it really was a very natural and organic thing because um, all my life, I guess, uh, you know, I've been, you know, once I got out of my nerdy, shy follower stage, I became very much a person who was um, a leader. And not even something that I kind of um, selected for myself. It was just kind of like uh, people would always choose me to be a leader. Um, and, and my friends would take my advice and different things like that. And so, you know, that's kind of where the focus came in at. And it's something I can't help but do. Like um, if I see someone going down the, a wrong path, I'm going to tap them and be like, you know, that's not the path for you, right? <laughs> You don't want to go down that way, you know, uh -huh. and um, and that's something that I've I've done for many, many, many years, decades at this point, and I don't even have to know a person really well to kind of have that kind of relationship. I, a feeling will come over me, and it will tell me to like have a moment with someone, and then I'll just do it. I'll stop down, and I'll have a moment with someone. So that's really where it came from, and because I lived these a myriad of like you said this this these lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I had gone from, you know, as you know, Lulu Brown Bevy to yeah. MC Bevsky to Big Bev from Uptown to Beverly Smith Fashionista to Bevy Smith, who you see before you, you know, um, I knew that there were lessons that I learned in every step of mm -hmm. every incarnation of my life. And so I wanted to share those. Now, going back and writing a book about your life can be difficult, like opening up those wounds and stuff. What was the hardest story to tell or to relive. My dad, my dad passing away due to COVID. That was mm -hmm. the hardest story to tell because it was still so fresh. My dad died in April of right. 2020 and I probably wrote my dad's chapter in maybe June. So it was really, really raw and um, really difficult. I knew it needed to be done. He deserved a tribute. He deserved his own chapter. Um, and it was, I love, I loved it. I thought it was great. Cause you took a, you took his own words, right. And put it in yeah. the book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, and my condolences to you and your entire family. Thank you, my love. So how have you, I mean, you're going through grief of your dad. How do you continue to keep showing up? Like, how do you keep being creative and showing up every day? Well, you know, some days you don't show up and that's okay too. 
And I want us to get out of that idea that we always have to show up and we always have to pull on a brave face. And we always have to be strong. If you're not feeling well, take a damn rest, okay? You know, um, no, I will not allow anyone to work me into a grave, into a stroke, into poor health. I'm not going to do it. And so I take time for myself. You know, there's a lot of talk about self-care. And self-care yeah. often looks like, you know, a bubble bath or, you know, you know, taking a yoga class, which those are, those are definitely um, real valid parts of self-care. But for me, self-care really means utilizing the word no. No, I don't want to do that. And then don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's self -care. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the greatest ways that you can take care of yourself in this insane time of a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great time to reevaluate your life and figure out what works and what doesn't work and what doesn't work you should be figuring out how you're going to cast it aside. Did you find anything that wasn't working while you're writing this book? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, that's a good question, my love. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think because I, I kind of already knew certain things. Like I, I knew, um, I knew from doing the, um, my job at page six TV that I never wanted to do another show that had any element of gossip in it. Like I like doing a pop culture entertainment show, but if it's going to have any kind of gossip mm -hmm. attached to it, I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, just because I don't care to gossip about celebrities. I like interviewing celebrities, which is why my, my radio show, Bevelations, on Radio Andy on Sirius XM is like one of the greatest gigs I've ever had. Because I get to talk to celebrities and I talk to them about more than just their projects, but I get to talk to them about their lives and their passions and also find out you know their journey mm -hmm. and that's the stuff that i'm really interested in yeah and I, I love your show because you get you get raw with them you get you it's you you seem like you're best friends with everyone who comes on your radio show and you, even if you i don't know if you are best friends with everyone who comes on but for the i, I have a lot of listeners who are in the podcast space or who want to aspire to do radio what advice would you have for them as they're doing their podcast and interviewing people like that you've learned along your journey oh i would say definitely listen the listening part is really very important. And I think I honed my listening skills from traveling to Europe to conduct business, but not speaking a foreign language, not speaking Italian not, and not speaking French. So I always had to listen really hard to really make sure I was taking in what people were saying to me because due to the accents and also due to um, people that oftentimes will use English and their foreign language together. You know, in New York, we call it Spanglish. Yep. You know, people do Spanish and English together. But I had to learn how to listen really hard and diligently to um, really kind of take in what my clients were saying. And I find that that is a great skill set um, with, the, with the radio show. Because I think a lot of times people that are doing interviews are not listening. They're simply asking the question, and waiting for the person to answer so then they can move on to the next question mm -hmm. on the list. But the best part of being a good interviewer is you take what that person has said, and then if it leads you into a totally different direction, then what that, that next question on your list is said, you scrap the, 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 the prepared question and you go with your gut and you follow them down that path and you see what happens. So right. again, journey. I like that. And it's so hard though, sometimes, because you really have this question you want to ask that's like burning inside of you. So, but I get that you have to like listen and, and go with the flow. So with that, I'm going to ask the next question. You talked about traveling to Europe and you talk a lot about travel in your book. You love traveling and you've been to some amazing places. What's been your favorite? Well, I have different places based on continents. Okay. So in Asia, it has been um, Bali. Nice. That's probably one of the first trips I'm going to take when the pandemic is over. That will be one of my first trips. Um, from um, South America, it definitely is Salvador de Bahia in Brazil. Okay. Amazing. I felt my most black and most African self there even more so than I did when I was in South Africa, which I call Africa light. <laughs> so, so South Africa is your favorite in Africa? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Af South Africa is not. Because no. it's not, it doesn't feel very, very African. It doesn't feel very, it's so colonized, especially mm -hmm. when you go into Cape Town. Yeah. It's just so colonized. It's just yeah. like, it's yeah, I went there last year. Yeah, it's gorgeous, but you don't really get a sense of the culture there. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. unless you're going to the townships, um, which is weird because it's a whole entire mm -hmm. country of black people that you have to go into a neighborhood to find the black. Anyway, don't get me started on that. <laughs> but um, as far as Africa goes, um, I recently went to Ghana. I went to Ghana last year and I absolutely loved that. I also went to Tanzania the year before. Love that. Where um, in Tanzania? So, huh? Where in Tanzania did you go? Gosh, why am I drawing the blank, baby? Dar es Salaam? No. Um, Moshi? No. Mm, Zanzibar? Zanzibar, thank you. <laughs> I was Zanzibar, baby. I don't know why I was drawing the blank. Yes, I was. Okay. Zanzibar. It's been a long year. <laughs> it's been a long year. I went to Zanzibar. Um, I brought in um, New Year's uh, 2019 in Zanzibar. And it Very was nice. one of my, my most amazing trips. Um, I love, love, loved it. Um, uh, so where else were we? So I did Asia, I did Africa. Oh, Europe, gosh, that's a tough one. You know, you can't go wrong with Paris, the city of lights. Um, yeah, but then I also love Rome. Rome is one of my favorite cities. Very romantic. Yeah. Just, I love the nooks and crannies. I love how you get lost all in Rome. Yeah. Also that's Croatia. True. I love Croatia. I love Greece. Yeah. There's a lot of places, but anyway, yeah. I can go on and on and on. I've been, I've traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, that is thanks to my dad. He gave us the love of travel just through his books and um, geography quizzes and things like that. So um, and me and my siblings, we all love travel. Yeah, I can't wait to get back on an airplane. I'm yep. literally dying to get back on an airplane. Yeah, <laughs> So what was the most fun story for you to relive and tell the world about in your book? Oh, the most fun? Wow. I had fun writing that story where I talk about having the lover in Los Angeles and having the layover <laughs> and then having like an anal fissure. Yes. <laughs> and um, I, I, I like that. So it's a raunchy story, but it's a fun story for me. And especially I love the fact that even though I was in literal pain, mm -hmm. I created Malibu Bevy out of that. Like out of that pain, I birthed this amazing alter ego who is my guiding light. I'm trying to get to Malibu Bevy as we speak. And, and I feel every year I get closer to her. You know what I mean? And, and she's, like a, she's like a beacon. And that came out of that horrible time where I had and ain't no fissure and have a lover in Los Angeles and, you know, had to figure out how to have sex with them while I had a throbbing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that story, that story definitely had me rolling. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe she went through all of that and like, <laughs> she, she survived. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> my favorite story was when you quit Rolling Stone. The story you tell about going into that office and what you said to them. Can you share a little bit about like, how you were feeling, how you overcame that fear. Because I know for a lot of us, we are stuck in our nine to five, our corporate jobs, and you took that plunge. I mean, and, and, and you talked about it. You went through five years of agony. How are you gonna get there? How are you gonna get there? So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I first realized I was really dissatisfied with my current life, which was a fabulous life and a dream life for many people. Like it was a dream life for me once upon a time. And then as I started changing and morphing, I realized that that life no longer could hold me. It was no longer the attractive life that I thought it would be. You know, I thought that once I became a fashion insider and I was sitting front row at fashion shows and traveling all over the world and, and receiving fancy fashion items for free and having discounts at every store and all these things, I thought, oh my gosh, well, that means you've made it and you're going to have a great life. And then I get there and I feel like, is that all there is? So that's at 33 years old. I say, is that all there is? And then I don't know what I want to do, but I just know I don't want to do what I'm currently doing as a fashion, um, the senior director of fashion advertising at Rolling Stone magazine. And then I decide that I'm going to change my name because I'm like, what can I change in my life right now that I can do right now with with no fuss, no muss, and no pain to anyone, including myself. And I decided I'm not going to let people call me Beverly Smith from Vibe Magazine. I'm going to, um, you know, who runs Vibes Advertising. I'm going to go by Bevy Smith, and I'm going to make people take time 
stop down and acknowledge Bev Bevy Smith. And then you can say, yes, and she also does the advertising for Vibe. Fine. So that was one of the things that I did. Um, and then, so that was the start. But it took five years. Mm -hmm. Five years of figuring out what it was that I wanted to do. A lot of stops and starts. One of the things is that I never wanted to leave Vibe Magazine. I was happy there. Finally, I found a place where my uptown Harlem girl, bevy self, hip hop hottie self could mesh with my corporate Beverly Smith. You know, I've been working in fashion advertising for decades. So I the, finally, I found a place where they could meet and they meshed and they worked well together. So I didn't want to give that up. Also I had an amazing family unit at Vibe Magazine. So I didn't want to give that up. And then, you know, in my pursuit of trying to get them to let me do something else, which is the craziest thing. It's one of the parts of the book that's so like painful for me to read is because I was looking for the, the, my bosses at Vibe Magazine to give me permission to lead the life that I wanted to lead. How ridiculous is that? Yeah. But that happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. We're all looking for someone to give us permission for our lives to be great especially women. We are waiting for someone to come down and ordain that this is what we should do and this is what we should have and they're willing to give it to us and they'll usher it forth and no. You have to do that for yourself. True. Right, and true. Um, it took all those years and all of those starts, stops and starts. And so finally from the age of 33 to 38, I was figuring it out. And once I realized that I wanted to write and I wanted to do TV and all that kind of stuff, then it got a little easier because I was like, okay, now I've identified where I want to go once I leave here. Mm -hmm. And and then I thought it was going to be easy breezy. And it kind of was until it wasn't. And that's when we go into the broke but blissful chapter. <laughs> I like ran out of money in yeah. the middle of my journey of becoming this TV and media personality. And um, yeah. And then, you know, calamity ensues, right? But you stayed on track like you a lot of people would have gone through what you went through and ran out of money and been uh rent behind on rent and would have said okay time to go find my job again or go back to corporate yeah. but for seven years you stayed true to what you wanted and I, i'm so curious how did you on the bad days especially how did you just stay positive and not not go back to corporate well the book is called, the chapter that you're referring to is called broke but blissful so mm -hmm. i literally was very happy with my new life literally ecstatic about my new life. It was great. I was writing for Glamour, Paper, Interview, you know, Essence. You know, I was writing for all these people. I was on VH1 and BET and E and all these different channels doing, uh, you know, TV commentary stuff. So I was doing everything I wanted to do, everything I quit my job to do. I just wasn't making any money at it. <laughs> so I was broke, but I was blissful. Mm -hmm. that's the reason why it was easy enough well not easy because it was it was arduous but that's the reason why I never really gave much thought to going to get in the corporate job because the universe had already shown me that I was on the right track because the universe kept giving me these great opportunities to do exactly what I said I wanted to do so how can you you know how can you be upset with the universe they've given you what you want now there's just no money attached to it <laughs> so then you got to figure it out. But then the, also, because there was no money attached to it, I became an accidental entrepreneur and created Dinner with Bevy. Dinner with Bevy is the reason why I have relationships with people like Pharrell and Kerry Washington and Ava DuVernay and Idris Elba and all these people because I did dinner parties for them. I, I started the business where I hosted dinner parties for celebrities and connected them with brands. Right. I took what was at my hands. I knew celebrities. And I have relationships with big brands and I married them together and I, and that sustained me for a little while. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So there were all these incredible things that were happening while I was broke but blissful. Right. Okay. You know? and so that's how come I was able to thug it out. But I will say, and then you know this cause you read the book, but that year six, I was, I called up my dear friend, Ali Muhammad and I said, babe, I think we might need to do a, a docu-series called last chance baby because if, if I don't get like a big solid TV show gig, I think I'm going to go back and go, and go on ahead and get myself a nice fancy corporate job. Cause I did miss certain luxuries. I did, 
you know, I had, I have been, I have been very, very spoiled in my um, career um, financially and the, yeah. the perks. And then I stopped having all those perks and certainly none to pay. So I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> but I'm so glad that, um, you know, that last year of me putting effort into it, it cracked. And that's when I got Bravo's Fashion Queens. Yep. And that job was literally given to me by Andy Cohen. Mm -hmm. With no fuss, no muss. Just like, oh my gosh, I know what we should be doing with you. Um, you you should be a, a, a one of the hosts on this show I want to create. It was that simple. Your time came and it was time for you to shine. Yes. Yes. I want to go back quickly to your dinner parties. Have you ever had to kick someone out of one of your dinner parties? Yes. <laughs> Are yes. you going to tell us who? I will. I will. Oh gosh. Why, why am I drawing the blank on his name? Oh, gosh. Um, he used to go out with Chelsea Handler. It was him and Chelsea. Um, his name, he owns the Chateau Marmont. He's very okay. attractive. I'll have to Google him. You have to Google him. And <laughs> I don't know why I'm, it's because it's been a long day already. That's um, fine. But um, I was having a dinner for Pharrell at the Chateau Marmont. And um, it was like, Charlize Theron was there, Ellen Pompeo, Usher. Um, oh gosh, so many big famous people. Oh, Cameron Diaz, like a bunch of, of big A-list stars. And my dinners are all seated dinners as in name cards and, you know, and I do a seating chart, the whole thing. And um, it was at the Chateau Marmont. And it was during Oscar season because um, Pharrell was doing the music for the Oscars that season for the first time. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do a dinner with him. So I contacted Target. They underwrote the dinner. We were doing this dinner to congratulate Pharrell. So at the Chateau Marmont, it's a Hollywood kind of staple. Mm -hmm. So they were doing a bunch of different dinners, including a dinner for Chanel. And... Um, uh, Chelsea Handler and her boyfriend, oh, I cannot remember his name, um, came to my dinner and they were like, oh, this dinner is a lot more fun than the other ones in the, in the hotel. Oh, we're going to stay. And I was like, well, I don't really have seats for you. And she's like, he owns the joint. I said, yeah, but here's the thing. We own this space now because we paid for it. So I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have room. I literally don't, my table is full. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a little funny moment that happened. Yeah. Wow. I want to also ask you, so COVID has changed people's lives. I mean, people have lost their jobs, their businesses, they're starting from scratch and they have to become their own entrepreneur now. Yeah. What advice do you have for a budding entrepreneur now that you've gone through that journey? Um, the biggest advice I would give to a budding entrepreneur is try to create something that doesn't need a lot of capital investment. Try and create something that's literally you have at your hands. I'll tell, give you a perfect example. My sister um, uh, has a business called Miss Lolly's Kitchen. It's named after my mom. And she makes everything from like full on catered meals, dinners. She'll do it for like TV sets and I mean, TV, um, TV locations, mm -hmm. different things like that. And then she'll also cater full like holiday dinners. A lot of people don't want to cook, but they still want the, all the fixings. She'll do that for people as well. Different things. Well, this weekend, we just had a huge pop-up event and her cake sold out. Wow. Because so many, and then people came back the next day saying, are there any more cakes? So she literally took what, that was, what was at her hand. She knows how to cook. She's a seasoned baker mm -hmm. and she has a sister who has a platform and we smashed it together and she has a thriving business. Love so it. Was at your hand. You may not have a sister that has a big, you know, kind of network or what have you, but what you do have is social media. I find that social media is the really great, like icebreaker for businesses now. You know, when I was starting out, there was no social media really when I was doing dinner with Bevy. I had to literally rely on my relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't even imagine how much better it would have been if there had been like a real active social media piece to it. Um, another piece of advice I will tell folks is to get an accountant. 
I got into financial duress, as you know, from reading the book um, for many different reasons. But one of the biggest reasons is because I didn't pay my taxes as an independent contractor. So oh, okay. pay your damn taxes um, and have someone looking over them for you. That, that's definitely something that an entrepreneur should do. And the other thing is, you know, really hone in on what it is that you want to do. I know so many people believe in the, in the hustle and the like, get it however you can. I don't, I'm not a big believer in the hustle. Uh, I know people call me a hustler and things like that, but I don't think so. Because uh, to me, a hustler is someone who will do anything to get the money. Like it doesn't really matter. They can sell a car, they can sell a magazine, they can sell, you know, whatever, but they're gonna get the money however they need to. And that, that's not how I'm built. Instead, all of my work is, is fueled by my passions and my interest. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's a much better way in which to approach being an entrepreneur, because then you won't have those um, moments like when you're not happy, when it's not going so great, you'll still be able to look at it like, well, I'm doing what I love, which is what mm -hmm. I did when we talk about the Broke the Blissful chapter. Mm -hmm. so I wasn't making any money, but I was loving what I was doing. And that was awesome. And so that sustained me. And I love that because when I was reading your book, I was like, this woman is 54 years old and she, she's still so full of life. Like your revelation was what it's like, um, it gets greater later, right? Like you're still so, so optimistic and so positive. And as somebody in my mid thirties, I will say like, sometimes I'm just tired. I'm just, I'm like, Whew, I just need a break from like you trying and trying and trying. And so you were, you you're just break. an inspiration. You do need a break. <laughs> you do need a break. And I, would, and I would ask you to ask yourself, like, what is it that you're chasing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What is it that you're really chasing? What is it that you want? And do you truly want it? Or have they told you that's what you want? That's very deep. So you're doing this podcast. So good, you're following your passion on that. But what's your nine to five that's like, you know, kind of maybe not as satisfying for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we have to find ways to to, um, you know, create um, work that we can be passionate about, that yeah. we can go into with as much zest and zeal as we will with something that's a hobby, something that we're not getting paid to do. I know it's such a cliche. Oh my gosh, I would do it for free. And it's true, <laughs> I, most of the stuff that I do, I would do for free. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it for free. I like getting paid very well, but I would do it for free because I love it so much. Yeah, and no, that's true. That is a good question for the audience to think about is what what do we want, but what is it? Is it some, what was the, I forget what you, not forget, you said like, is it what they put on us? Yeah, yes, is it what they put on us? Put on mm -hmm. Because there's so many societal pressures. There's mm -hmm. pressure from your family. There's pressure from uh, the outside world of like social media, keeping up with the Joneses, you know. Um, you know, there's, there's so much that we have to, that we're being bombarded by so many messages. And what are we supposed to be doing? You know what I mean? And then there's people that are always ready to tell us what we should be doing, right? And even if it doesn't kind of feel right, if enough people keep telling you that that's where you're supposed to be, then you will feel compelled to follow through with that versus following your own mind and really figuring out what it is that makes you truly happy versus something that's gonna make them happy or make them feel like, okay, well now she's a success. Yeah. We have to kind of, gauge our own success. Like for myself, like I love that I'm still on this journey and, I, and I'm so patient about it. I'm in no rush. You know, I love every little step, every little incremental piece of success that I have surrounding my life and my career. It makes me very happy. I'm very proud of the fact that I've been able to sustain myself for this long um, in this part of my life. Mm -hmm. And that I'm now ready to jump into a whole nother space. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be doing TV in my 60s. I'll tell you that. <laughs> not in front of the camera. I, I, I'm not really that interested in it. You know, I want to do my TV show where I get to be a fairy godmother. And then I want to um, go behind the scenes, just produce all my different shows and things. And I want to be an art and an architecture curator. And so those wow. are the things that I'll do. Yeah. And, and anything lined up for, for this coming year, 2021? The book. The book. <laughs> the, the book, baby. 
the book is the book will set you free. The book is um, it's really a big part of what's next because honestly, the book is a vision board, and the book also lets people see me that um in a totally different way. So the book lines me up for my next chapter, for my next adventure, for my next journey. So it's really have, I have to ask because you wrote in the book you're gonna have Zoom meet and greet. So are you wearing pants right now? I actually am because I'm wearing. <laughs> But that okay. that my legs are not lotion. <laughs> so my legs are not my legs are not fit for public consumption because they're not. Lotion. I'm very active right now. That's, I'm okay with it. Okay. I want to jump. I want to jump into the lightning round. But before I jump in the lightning round, um, so Creative Breakthrough, as I mentioned, is a podcast that provides informal mentorship to creatives of color. We're trending in about 25 countries over all over the world. So in Africa, Asia, Europe. Can we get one revelation from you for us? That's just our revelation. I know I'm putting you on the spot mm. here, but something that maybe you haven't shared in the book that that can be ours. Wow, that's a good one. And 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 tell me again the the, the theme, the premise of the podcast. Um, in providing informal mentorships from successful creatives of color to creatives of color who are on their journey. So how do we win like you? How do we elevate ourselves? I would say here's a revelation, vibrate higher. Take the high road, take the high road and take the road less traveled. If you see folks, everyone's doing it, go another way, explore and don't be afraid to get lost. Sometimes you find yourself just when you think you're lost, you can actually find yourself. And that's a unique revelation. And that's one I absolutely love. I travel the world and I always get lost. And I find the most amazing things. Mm-hmm. I always make sure I um, like kind of keep like a beacon in my head, like of a, a landmark or something. Mm-hmm. Or I make sure I'm like, okay, I just passed the hotel. You always know you can stop in the hotel and someone will help you get back home. But I love getting lost. I love going to a city and not knowing where I'm going to go. I just look outside and I pick a direction and I go for it. And I found the most amazing things on my travels. And that's kind of how I, how I want to proceed with life as well. Getting lost and finding myself. And I think that that that's like the thesis of your book. So thank you for sharing that with us because I love it. I think it's great. So let's jump into the lightning round. Lightning round, I'm going to ask you five questions, rapid fire, and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Cool. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, the best piece of advice I've ever received. Oh my gosh, this one. You're enough. As you are, you are enough. The, my acting coach, not my acting coach, but the acting coach, very famous acting coach, Susan Batson told me that. She said, you are a book, you are a movie, you are a story being told. As you are, you can work. You are the character. That's the best piece of advice I've ever received. What's your definition of success? Happiness fueled by freedom, fueled by creativity. That is my definition of success. Happy, creative, and free. If you got all those things, maybe you're successful. Who inspires you and why? It's not one particular person, it's a type of people. Creatives have always inspired me. In the book, I talk about sleeping with a lot of creatives before I understood that I was a creative myself. So I've always been drawn to people that live really free lives that are filled with art and artistic expression. I've always been drawn to those people. So creatives inspire me. And I'm very, I feel so great that I finally am able to acknowledge that I too am a creative. Yes, I 100% you are a creative. You've been a creative since I met you, even before then, but what, what is a habit that's helped you on your journey? Oh, journaling is a great habit that's helped me on my journal, journey because, you know, as I say in the book, I couldn't have written this book without being able to reference a few journals from, you know, back in the day. So yeah, journaling has really helped me. Yeah, I was very, I was happy to see when you said you did morning pages because so many of my, I say so many, I should 
one of my therapists keeps telling me to do morning pages. And I'm like, I don't know. But now that I read your book, okay. I'm like, I'm going to do morning pages. It's really liberating. You should totally do it. It's a great way to start your day. And it really is just like free form, like just whatever. Mm -hmm. It might be gobbledygook. Or it could be something profound, mm -hmm. but don't read, don't read them just write, and then leave it alone and maybe pick it up a year or so later. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be surprised at what you find. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Last question. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh my gosh. I want my legacy to be that Lulu Brown Bevy showed up and showed out for people and for her community and um, for what was right. I always want to be a voice for the voiceless, I always want to fight for the underdog. No matter how fancy and how many and uh, how much access I have, I am always going to be Little Brown Bevy, a shy girl who was once bullied. And so I always want to speak up for others like her. Bevy, where can we find your book? You can find my book anywhere and everywhere. Your Amazon, your Barnes and Nobles, and of course your local independent booksellers. Um, there's a great um, uh, um, website you can go to, bookshop.com, and they will tell you um, of where you can find local booksellers in your community, and that way we can start supporting small businesses. But, of course, Amazon has it, uh, Barnes & Nobles, and all those folks. And if we wanted to follow your journey online, where could we find you? Um, everywhere that I'm uh, around on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I am Bevy Smith, B-E-V-Y Smith. Awesome. And I will vouch for the listeners, get this book. It, 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 I, I don't, I don't say this about a lot of books, trust me, because I read a lot of people's stories and I'm not going to mention their names, but there was one that just came out of, out of traffic light. And I will say that this book <laughs> blows it out of the water. I mean, you get this book guys. It will, it will change your life no matter where you are in your journey. So thank you so much, Bevy, for sharing your life with us. Thank you so much, my love. And I so appreciate you having me. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Questions. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you any feedback or advice on like improving or getting better. Um, actually you were really good. <laughs> like, like literally you were really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I've, had, I've had people not be great. You were really good. So no, you, you did a great job. You're a Thank great you. listener. Thank you. Listener is right. a damn battle. <laughs> I'm a brown woman in corporate America. I've had to learn to listen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it shows because you, you took in so much of what I said and you were able to do segues and you were able to do continuations. Like that's what it's about. So you were awesome. So I thank you. Well, you've been a great mentor because I, I listen to your podcast or not your radio show and I'm always taking notes. I'm like, oh, I love how she did that. Because I, I, I listened to one, I remember with Whoopi Goldberg. I don't think it was your show, it was someone else's show. Mm -hmm. And you were so good because she, she corrected you a few times and you were just like, you went with the flow. And I was like, yeah. oh, if she had done that to me, I would have been like, I would have been <laughs> like, I would have lost it. <laughs> so Whoopi is like amazing, but Whoopi is very particular. So once you know how people are, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just fine. And, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot about Tanzania, but my dad is from there, so I was excited. Oh, yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm glad you did. No, Zanzibar was incredible. Yeah. So, and I loved it. I just couldn't think of where I was in, in Zanzibar. <laughs> I, was, I mean, in Tanzania, I was so damn zonked. This is like my oh, yeah. interview, so I'm like, what? Huh? So no, no, it's fine. I just didn't want you to think I was pressing. I just, I keep, my dad will be so excited that you went to visit his home country. Yeah. So beautiful. So. Gorgeous. I'm, I'm dying to get back. Well, thank you again. Um, if you ever want to come back on the podcast, you can, you're free to always just reach out. I was so excited when, uh, when I got the email. So thank you so much. Well, no, thank you so much, baby. And I hope that it helps inspire some of your, your listeners. Wow. Wasn't that an awesome, awesome conversation, y'all? I feel like she just dropped so many gems in that conversation and she gave us our own bevelation for Creative Breakthrough listeners. How cool is that? Like we get our own Bevy Smith bevelation. And if you're a podcaster, listen carefully. She dropped a lot of hints in there on how we can improve our game as podcasters. My top three takeaways from this episode were one, follow your heart, two, stay true to your purpose, and three, it gets greater later. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. 
Thanks for listening. Stay connected about upcoming resources, including opportunities, festivals, competitions, and grants to help you grow your creative passion by subscribing to my bi-monthly newsletter by visiting funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. Don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity and subscribe today at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And hey, if you decide to go on Instagram today, follow me. I'm Funny Brown Girl. I'm Shereen Kassam, and you've been listening to Creative Breakthrough. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.